All right, 2024, most of the kayak bass fishing series schedules have dropped for the most part. Um, and there's been a couple more developments here in our region, of course, with the bass and, uh, restructuring, or reformatting, I should say, of Bass Nation. I'm going to get into that to in another video um, because I have a few more calls I want to make before I kind of do a real full breakdown on Bass Nation and what's happening with the new formatted change, no club affiliations, um, which is going to open it up to a lot of people, especially people in the series that I manage and am developing for people who um, don't really have club affiliations and don't want them, uh, but they still want to be able to participate in Bass Nation for an opportunity to get to the Bassmaster, you know, the big uh, kayak classic event. Um, but we're going to talk about Hobie, okay? Hobie, Hobie, Hobie. Yet again. This is what happens. Stick around for a little while. If you've been around, if you've been following this channel for two years or so, you kind of know. Okay, but if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, I've been saying this. I've been saying this. You guys know I've been saying this. Because I always approach this shit from a business side. It was coming. It was coming. Hobie Bass. Open Series. With the exception of two events. I think Lake Norman and then that one down at Wright. Pelham Wright. I can't remember the name. Texas. Um, trolling motors now permitted. Hobie Bass Open Series. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm just kidding. If you go on some of the groups, man, I, I'm serious. Like, I, I just, hey man, I'm on the outside looking in. I just can't relate to a lot of those people. Like, I, I've no, these people that claim that there's no advantage, there's no advantage to, to a trolling motor. Right. No advantage at all. No advantage at all. Why do boats have motors? There's no advantage to a motor. Why do boats have motors? To get you where you want to go faster. Faster is an advantage. Okay? Here's the other thing I want people to consider when they listen to this stuff. And they just kind of digest it all from the experts. Okay? Um, trolling motors on a kayak in terms of an advantage over someone who doesn't. Um, human power, as they say. Paddle power, as they say. If that wasn't an advantage, okay, over the years of people when you compete and you can choose to whether you want to paddle or you a motor, okay, and there are plenty of events that have been like that forever, there's no event that, like, I think requires you to have a motor, okay? So there's always been that option and that ebb and flow between the two. But if you look at it from the boater standpoint, what's one of the most critical aspects of a boater event? Where, what's your launch order, right? Why is that critical? Why is it critical? Why do you want to be... Maybe on the opening on day one because you know they flip them. But why do you want to be like in the when the first the first group of boats to get the launch, so you can get to the spot before everybody else, right? Is that an advantage? Yeah. Okay. If you're running a trolling motor and you launch from the same place as I launch without a trolling motor, and we both want to get to the dam and we both want to get to that spot that's a community hole, that community hole on Pickwick, that community hole on Wheeler, that flat that ledge, okay, if you've got the trolling motor, you're going to get there before me, you have an advantage. So this nonsense about trolling motors not being advantage, an advantage is absurd. It's absolutely absurd. Um, but yet people make it. Because somebody in a kayak without a motor maybe won an event over people who did. Well, that's not evidentiary to whether or not there was an advantage Okay, because we're not talking about the anglers. We're talking about the motor. Can the mo Does the motor benefit anybody in that kayak? Yeah, it's going to get them there faster. They're not going to be, they're not going to exert as much energy as the person paddling for an hour and a half, like I know river, bath, river rats do, to go to a spot that nobody's at. Okay? And then you get to, oh, well, they could get a trolling motor. They could, and the whole point is, you're right. We could all go buy an Icon boat tomorrow for one hundred and five dollars to $154,000. If you're using that argument, we could all go buy the, the fastest car, the biggest car, or a boat, or truck. Or, we all could do that, right? It's available. We all could do that. But the reality of it is, is not everybody wants. And then there are going to be people who aren't going to want to compete against people. And there are people who don't want to compete against people who run motors. Where do they go now? They gotta find a place. They gotta find a home. It's not Hobie's responsibility, okay? Um, but the reality of it is, is, I've always made the argument that the the differentiating factor between Hobie and Bass 
for those people who make the argument that those are the only two elite trails in the country because they just have a thing for KBF, okay? The differentiator is only two things. Motor for Bass and not for Hobie over the last few years. And who runs the organization? I said this on my Facebook page today, guys. The only reason Bassmaster is even relevant in the kayak space today, in 2023, is because of Steve. And because of the people who are affiliated with Dugout, who are affiliated with Steve, who are affiliated with Tennessee, who are affiliated with understand what a great guy he is and, 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 and what a great tournament director he is. If Bass had never appointed Steve to run Bassmaster, we wouldn't even be having this discussion, and I damn sure know Hobie wouldn't be going to a freaking motor. Right? Like, that, you can make that argument. So, because the people are making the argument that Hobie had to do this because they were losing ground to Bassmaster. Okay? I don't know if that's true. Um, but, because of registrations, yeah, Bass had better registrations in 2023 than they had in 2022. But is the trail growing? They still only have five events next year. Okay? So, they're not growing events. And if they max them all out, that's a thousand anglers on the water all of 2024. 200 per event max, I think is the max, at five events. That's a thousand dollars. I'm not a mathematician, but it's not hard to figure out. So of the, I don't know, 5.2 million kayaks sold, a thousand people are going to be fishing in bass next year. Put it in that context. Again, we all make things the way we all like to make things, right? That we like and are in our niche and they're in our wheelhouse and they're in our group and this is what we do and this is our hobby or this is our profession or this is our sport and this is what we gravitate to. In the big scheme of things, again, and I get it, I get clowned, I get it. Of all the people in this country that own a kayak, less than 1% ever compete in an event. Ever. That's local, regional, national ever less than one percent you guys are the one percenters think about that kayak anglers are the one percenters okay um because it's just true and when your events are back capped and they sold out like hobie used to sell out 200 and then they raised it last year this is the evolution of the kayak sport right hobie goes from selling out then to raising it to 225 raising it the entry fee to 295 and not selling out okay so that tells you the sweet spot was 250 or 265. 265 was a sweet spot. I think Bass is 250. Um, and then that 200 level. Because once you blew through that 200 level, I don't think they sold out any events. I don't think they hit 225 in any events. Maybe they did. You can comment if they did. So you hit a spot where you hit a wall. Okay. I mean, do you really want to enter an event with 250, 300, 350 kayaks in the water? I don't know. But to hold events like that, where are they going to schedule them? They're going to schedule them at big water, big lakes, along right alongside boats. And that's the problem with the kayak community, is they're just, a, they're boater light. They are. They're scheduling the same bodies of water as Bass and MLF. They're just boater light, okay? As opposed to some of the regional trails and local trails scheduling rivers, like rivers and lakes that, that probably can't hold 200 kayaks, right? or have enough launches or any of those things. Probably don't need motors. I got damn sure no, I don't need a motor on freaking the Upper Potomac. The upper, although today would be pretty good because the Upper Potomac Day is up five feet. Monoxy is up seven feet. Okay? So you can run a motor all day long. But under normal circumstances, most of the people that I know that run motors on kayaks on the Upper Potomac and on the Monocacy have to replace and repair crap all the time because they wreck it. Right? Because of all the rocks and all that stuff. So it really depends on where you live. So if you want to look at the schedule and decide whether or not you're going to compete, that's probably the determining factor as to whether or not you're going to get a trolling motor now if you don't already have one. Or you're just not going to compete at all um, in Bass or Hobie because you know now all those guys who are the hammers who fish both trails now get to run their trolling motors in both trails. So, you know, I mean, think about that. So, 
you gotta you gotta make the decision as to whether or not you're gonna get a trolling motor and a battery and all that good mess. Um, I don't think it was a good idea. That's my opinion. But then again, I'm a third party independent observer. I think the the best part about Hobie was it wasn't like KBF and like Bass. That it was different. The fact that they were going to remain true to the roots of river bassing and kayak angling at its core made Hobie what it is, in my opinion. Other than and AJ, of course. But in the reality, what's the difference between Hobie and bass right now? Now, all the rules are the same for the most part. What the biggest differentiator was the trolling motor. That's gone. Why don't they just merge? Go watch my video on YouTube from about two months ago. Why don't they just merge? How are they offering anything different now? What they're basically just telling us is we're gonna we're gonna run the we're gonna we're gonna do the same rules. We're gonna schedule basically the same bodies of water, give or take a year or so. Okay. Um, we're gonna track 30% of the same anglers that fish both series, meaning they fish both bass and Hobie. Okay. Um, we just think we can run it better. Now it's a management question. That's all it is. It's not a fishing question. It's not a schedule question. It's not a rules question. It's not a... It's just personalities. And they're both good dudes, right? But in reality, there's no differentiator anymore. Maybe the payouts. I don't know. Maybe that somebody could make the argument that, well, no, Jay, the payout for Hobie or the payout is, you know... But at the end of the day, what's the difference now between the trails other than the branding? Right? There were differences between MLF and Bass, okay? There were. Best five versus catch, you know, all, you know, all that. I mean, there were some differences that you could really, really point to. The biggest difference in kayak fishing that we could always point to was motors. They've taken that away, except for two events. Um, so it makes you kind of wonder, why don't they just merge? Like, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just like, I don't know what all the all the hammer all is, you know, about all the all the banter and all the back and forth and all the whatever. I guess people just like to bitch about stuff. I don't really know, but it's like if if you like bass, you you should like Hobie now, right? Like if you were if you were if you liked bass because of the trolling motor and you know what I mean, and it was a great series. Well, then you should like Hobie now because all the rules are freaking the same. All the rules are the same, and the trolling motor's the same. So what's the difference? Other than the personality, Steve and AJ, I mean, what's the difference? I mean, they're literally the same trail now, like, right? So, and they're fishing in the same geographical demographic area. It's not like you've got, you know, like Hobie fishing in the southeast and bass fishing in the northeast where, okay, and I said this in my vi in video um, the other day, like if you live where I live, on average, it's 10 hours for a Hobie event one way that's the average distance to each event the closest event to me is two hours here's uh two hours Susquehanna for Bassmaster okay Cayuga is like six five and a half for Hobie okay so the nearest events for Bass are 11 hours on average if you went to all five you have spent 22 hours there and back on average for all the events Obi's a little less at about 10 and a half. Okay? People going to do that? If you have a no motor, if you have no intention of buying a motor, you've got to make that decision now, but if you've been if you've been fishing in Hobie because it didn't have a motor and you like that, okay, are you now going to drive? If you live in Balt if you live in, you know, Baltimore, D.C., Harrisburg, Richmond, Roanoke, Charlottesville, I mean, you name it. Okay? Frederick, Maryland, are you going to drive 10 hours each way to fish in an event with no motor to compete against guys with a motor? At some of these big lakes, big water, big G, right? Are you? I don't know what the answer to that question is. We're going to find out. I just know and believe that, the va to me, the business value of Hobie was the fact that it was different. That was its value. It was different. The other rules are all the same. Scoring's all the same. 
judging's all the same, inches are all the same, catch board all more or less the same, although you can, you have to use a certain metal catch board, I think, for, for Hobie versus, but I mean, it's all, it's all basically the same premise. Again, except for the personalities. And I repeat myself. Bass was in freaking trouble in 2022. They flipped a switch. How did they flip the switch? They named a reputable tournament director, okay, via Bass Nation, Tennessee, all that stuff, and Steve to take it over and write the ship, and he did. And he also had the support of a 15,000 member group in the kayak bass fishing community, okay? Because they're, they know, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of those guys fish for dugout, I think. A lot of people do, pro staff. So they, they, they had a relationship, and they, everything's about relationships. It is. And so it didn't it didn't take long for him to turn that around, being transparent. So a lot of people that were, for 21 and 22, that were like, you know, Hobie, Hobie is that freaking golden child, right? Kobe could do no wrong, okay? Suddenly shifted loyalties to Bassmaster, okay? It doesn't mean they didn't fish Hobie, but it was like they were... They were pro, more um, supportive of bass than they were in 2021 20, and 22. Okay, that's all I mean by that. A lot of these guys fish both. Okay, um, so you know, I'm kind of bummed, like myself, from a, from a, like for people, other other people than myself. Um, you know, there are other series in the region. There are other things happening, like I said, with Bass Nation in Maryland and Bass Nation Virginia and West Virginia, and a lot of more trails you know, opening up, um, that will allow you to fish, because you're going to be fishing skinny water, shallow water, as we say, um, you don't need a motor, so they're going to be opportunities for people to fish, um, you know, it's just, they won't be able to fish at that level, and it's up to those trails to elevate, like, what we're working on and working doing is bringing a lot of new sponsors and a lot of new partners in that aren't involved with the national trails, okay, um, a lot of non-endemics, Okay, um, and to increase the payouts and, and to get things, you know, um, at a higher level, obviously not as high as they're going to be because they're going to be charging $275, $295 per angler and they're going to get 175 anglers, maybe 200 to show up. So the payouts for that are always going to be more because they draw more, right? I mean, that's how it works. Um, but it's up to the other local and regional trails to do a, 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 a step it up, right? Cater to the niches like we do in river bassing series um, for smallmouth. Just cater to those people who want to who want to fish a certain way, a certain style in rivers. You know, no lakes, no reservoirs, just rivers, or no motor, or they want motor, or want the motor option. Maybe they want to wade fish. Maybe they want to tether a kayak. Maybe they want to you know all, all fish out of the boat. All these things. Fill the niches in the community is really what is going to happen. And now this provides another opportunity. So that's what I tell people. is like, well, there's an opportunity now. Maybe there's an opportunity for KBF to begin a non-motor, non-mechanized boater division. They've got Smalley Series. They've got the River Series. They've got the Trail Series. What's to stop Chad Hoover from developing out a trail series motor trail series no motor and they compete at the same day so you're only competing against guys with the motor and you're only competing against guys without a motor in terms of that right i mean if the demand is such to the extent that there's a lot of people who are upset over hobie switching to the motor then there should be an opportunity there. If there's not enough, then there was never an opportunity there. Hobie was just being stubborn. You can look at it like that, right? But I think everything realized that the, the evolution was bound to happen for Hobie to get to the motor side. Um, you know, and, and I don't know. We'll see how it shakes out. I don't think it's as I don't think it's as doom and gloom as some people have it. I don't understand why people you know, it's like forward-facing sonar. I don't understand why people get so, like, animated about... I guess it's just change. Um, and the new. Sometimes people don't like the new. Um, they don't like change. They don't like new people. 
you know, coming along, rocking, upset, like Bass Nation, for example. I use, on my page, I use the analogy, well, when you upset the apple cart, there are people who've been around for a while who don't like it, okay? Maybe there are people who aren't going to like this from Hobie, but at the end of the day, they can decide whether or not they're going to fish or not. They don't have to fish with a motor, okay? They can make their own assessment and pick and choose their events, um, decide what events suit their style of fishing. That's what I tell people. I was like, you don't have to fish all these events. Like most of us around here will fish Susky Bassmaster next year. Kayak Adventure Series, Susky. One event. One event bass. Most people probably won't go all the way to Cayuga that I know from here because Cayuga is a lake, it's not a river. And it's six, seven hours away. And now they're going to be keep competing against guys with motors. They're 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 probably not going to want to make make that trip, okay? Um, as opposed to like two hours up to up to Susky, you know. Even though there's plenty of places to fish on Susquehanna, West Branch, North Branch, Main Stem, that you don't need a motor. Sus, I mean, Hobie has proven that for years and years. The numbers of Susquehanna taken out of there without guys with motors. So that's going to draw a lot of people. That's going to be it for a lot of people here. And I don't think all that has to do with the motors. I think it compounds the problem. Mostly it has to do with the schedule. It has to do with the fact that, like I said, you're 10 hours each way away on average from the events. You know? We just don't get the events scheduled in our region like a lot of us wish we did. And a lot of us would fit. A lot of us would fish more of those kinds of events if they did. I mean, even KBF, is, I think, has left the Potomac this year. Um, so a lot of people are upset at that that I've talked to, you know. I mean, Hobie left Susquehanna last year and people were upset and didn't go to the new. They were upset, um, you know. So now with the motors, it, it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, how everyone comes down on it, whether it was a business decision, whether it was a sponsor decision, whether it was keeping up with Bass decision, we don't really know what the real this real reason for it all, but no one should be surprised that it happened, right? I mean, we've been talking about this now for two years. I think Chad Hoover even said, Chad Hoover might have been the first one to publicly say he thought Hobie was going to motors, and I think that was last summer, or late spring. So we shouldn't be surprised. Um, and we'll see how it checks out, you know, um, and we'll see people make their minds. Maybe people change their kayak setups. Maybe people decide to get motors, you know, maybe it benefits the motor companies. Maybe it benefits the battery companies that are sponsoring Hobie, you know, and all those things. Maybe it, now it will have more people fish both. I don't know. Um, you know, we'll really have to see how it shakes out. Um, I, I hope that we still maintain like Queen City, um, for people. Because I know a lot of people love that trail that I've talked to. A lot, it's down further further south of us. But I, they have Maryland. They have, I'm sorry, they have Virginia events coming in 2024. 2024. Smith Mountain Lake, Leesville, Chickahominy River. Um, you know what? And as far as I know, they're maintaining no motor. So that's an option for people. You know, in Virginia and Maryland. Okay? Um, that don't want to get a motor. Um, that like to like to fish the rivers without a motor. Um, so there's still going to be some opportunities, mates. So you're still always going to have to compete, get, compete against people with motors in a lot of events, though. Okay, um, but there's still some opportunities where you can actually still maintain, you know, your position of wanting to be a river rat, wanting to be a river basser, um, maintain that tradition of fishing shallow water and skinny water, and you know, and 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 not participate in that evolution. That unfortunately, our national trails are moving moving closer to just being boater light. They really are. And I know I'll take shade and I'll get called a clown and all that stuff. Um, but in reality, it's the truth. You're, you're looking more and more and more like nothing more than boater light. Okay? Equipment-wise, technology-wise, schedule-wise, all of those things. And there are going to be some people, probably those of us north of 48 to 50, who probably aren't going to participate in it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, for those that did. Or the new people coming into the sport are probably not going to 
want to compete at that level um, right away anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. But that's my take on the Hobie. Um, I think it's a lot of noise. I think it's a lot of just banter and back and forth and chest pumping and, you know, pe normal stuff, you know, that happens all the time when there's change or when someone makes a change. I will be interested to see what the KBF response is going to be, however, in terms of filling the gap on a big stage level of non-motor, creating a non-motor division. That would be very, very interesting. I don't know what the, the actual growth trajectory would be. Right now, they're averaging about 50 to 60 people in the smallmouth series monthly, the river series monthly, and it's brand new. Um, I'm not really sure... Uh, you know what that would be in terms of a draw um, for KBF. I think there are a lot of people. I, there are a lot of people that fish without a motor, but a lot of those people also usually don't compete in kayak bass fishing events or compete in any kayak fishing events, right? So that would be the opportunities to reach them. I mean, we have a lot of people in our series that have never fished bass, KBF, or Hobie ever. So we'll see. <coughs> I'm sorry, getting, getting that cold back being out, being out in these December days. But we'll see how it uh, um, how it all shapes out, you know, for everybody. Just comment in your section, reach out, you got any insight, you know, send me a message. Um, I'm going to follow up a little bit more on this. I'll follow up a little bit more on Bass Nation Maryland and their new format change for 2024, going to unaffiliated clubs. You just have to be a member of Bass, Bass Bass, and be a member of Bass Nation Maryland, and you can fish in their eight events. Four events of which have already been released. I'll talk about those. Um, I just want to really, I just want to talk to the guys, the tournament directors from the East and the West and overall Bass Nation really first before I really, really dive in and give any real commentary about it. I always like to do that. Um, regardless of what anybody says to you, when I do op-ed, when I do commentary on stuff, I always reach out to these tournament directors. Okay? You know? And a lot of times I don't get an answer, which tells me everything. Or I get a stupid email back that's like, cease and desist talking about my trail. Um, I don't need to answer any of your questions. Oh, okay, you don't. <laughs> Nobody said you did. I just wanted to offer you the opportunity to be able to provide your take on controversy. So we can get a better understanding of where your head's at, right? So it's really all just how different people handle the scenarios. Um... Those guys in Maryland have taken a lot of heat, a lot of gaslighting, okay, which I think is laughable myself. I think it's unwarranted. I think it's unprofessional. Um, I think it tells you more about the people doing the gaslighting than it does about the two guys that are sticking their necks out that are doing the heavy lifting. Um, and we're going to get into that. We're going to break it really, really down and, and have some little truth, what we call some truth telling, okay? Because these people that go on social media talk about, oh, it was fine the way it was. It was great the way it was. It was, we don't need to make these changes, right? Yeah, you do. You have less than 20 anglers fishing a state championship with how many million people live in the state of Maryland, right? Let me think about it. How many people live in Virginia, okay? 8 million, 10 million, okay? You're only getting 20 people at your state championship. That shit's broken. Okay, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's the best angler in the Northeast is in charge of it. I don't care if, if the guy has been in fishing, kayak fishing for 10 years and is his brand is, is a million followers. Okay, I don't, I don't care. That's all great. Well done you. The reality of it is when you get 13 to 19 anglers fish a state championship and something as reputable as the Bass Organization there's something wrong, okay? And it's broken. And I give a shout out to these guys for stepping up and um, doing some heavy lifting and make it better and provide something different to get more people involved so more people have an opportunity. That's what Bass Nation wanted for the boater side too, is to give an opportunity, grassroots opportunity for more people to punch their ticket to the Bassmaster Classic on the boater side. Or the Bassmaster Kayak Classic on the kayak side. Isn't that what we should be about? Should we, Or should we be about staying small? We should be about staying con controlled. Where the minority of people go, keep going every year because it's they're, they're big kayaks in a small pond. Right? 
Is that really where we want to be at? Is that where we want the community at? I don't think so. Um, you know, and the same freaking noise, the same freaking noise. Okay, gaslighters always chime in in the region. It's the same that don't, you know, I don't know what they're contributing. I really don't because they're not contributing to success and growth and they're not contributing to even success and growth of their own trails anymore, which have hit a wall um, because people are just are tired of that noise. They're just tired of it. So we want to go forward. We want to get more people in, create more series, be part of KBF if you're with us and or NVKBA in, Mar in uh, Virginia um, affiliated with Bass Nation, affiliated with supporting the other groups and the other, you know, um, grow the sport, right? Approach things from that perspective, not, not big, you know, big kayak, small pond mentality where we can send our buddies and our guys to the, to, to the easier route for our members to get to the Bass Master, you know, through Bass Nation as opposed to having a hundred guys show up to fish in the championship, Okay. Right? Why can't we do that? Why can't we have 50 guys in 2024 show up? Right? We can do that. Now, there's no club affiliation. There's no barrier of entry. Pay your bass. Most of us are members of bass already. So pay the 35 bucks, I think. Maybe 50 now, but I think it's 35. To Bass Nation. Fish fish three of the events or whatever whatever the whatever the requirement's going to be. Okay? And get in there. Punch your ticket to the state championship. Finish in the top three or four. I mean, think about it. If we could send three or four anglers when we had 20 competing, um, shouldn't we be able to send a lot more if we get 50 or 100 people to compete? Right? More people going to a national championship? More people going to Bassmaster? Just my thoughts, mates. Hey, always, you're always welcome on my Facebook page. You're always welcome to message me or call me if you got my digits. Um, I'm always here for you. Um, if you want me to take a look at something, I will. If you want to bring something to my attention, please do. Follow me on Facebook, JL Scott Fishing Needs. Follow me on TikTok. Uh, follow me on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, just hit that thing, okay? Just hit it so you can catch up to stuff. A lot of short videos, a lot of stuff like that, you know, coming to your feed. You'll be able to be like it, comment on it. Let us know. You know what? It's a community, okay? We're growing. That's all I can say. I'm not, gonna be, I'm not making any apologies about it. We have grown. In the last two years, to 25,000 people on YouTube, 37, 3,800 people on Facebook, 5,000 people on TikTok. We're, we keep growing every single month, and we're going to continue to grow because we're honest, and we're authentic, and we who we are about what we are. And you guys always know where I'm coming from because I don't I wear this shit on my freaking sleeve. I, I, I tell you how I feel. I'm right about a lot of stuff, and I'm wrong about stuff sometimes. We'll see how it is. I don't think I want to be wrong about this for Hobie. I don't. I'm not really sure this is going to have the impact that they think, you know, but we'll see what happens. You know, there are a lot smarter people out there in the kayak fishing community than me. So we will see how this all plays 